Hello, everyone. A very good evening to all the participants who are attending International Conference of Dental Genetics and Clinical Diagnostics 2023. Myself, Dr. Sourendranath Basu, and today I'll be delivering my lecture on prospects of research in dentistry, a guide for undergraduate students and postgraduate aspirants. So a little bit about myself. Currently, I'm working as a postgraduate student in the Department of Oral Pathology and Microbiology in Maulana Azad Institute of Dental Sciences, New Delhi. Recently, I have become a life member of Indian Association of Forensic Odontologists. Previously, I have worked as a house surgeon in the Department of Periodontia and Community Dentistry, Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery, Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics in Dr. R. Ahmed Dental College and Hospital, from where I have passed my Bachelor's of Dental Surgery. Let's dive into the topic of our discussion today. So as we already know that dentistry is a branch of medical science which involves the study of oral diseases in terms of diagnosis, prevention, and treatment. Now, cosmetic dentistry not only deals with the diseases, but also emphasizes how treatment systems can be utilized to increase the beauty of our aesthetics of orofacial structures. Now, research is a converging point which stands at the center of the triangle that is formed by diagnosis, prevention and treatment modalities associated with oral diseases. So let's talk about research. So the main goal of research is to generate new knowledge, insights or understanding through a systematic and organized process. It involves gathering, analyzing and interpreting information which focuses on a specific subject or topics that aims to answer questions, address problems or explore areas of interest. Now we use well-defined scientific methodologies, data collection methods, analysis techniques, which are later tested by a statistic analysis to see the results we have got to our research or study, how significant the result is. Now, the aim is to ensure the reliability and validity of our findings to solve problem or prove a theory. Now, what are the benefits which one student can gain when he or she is engaged in research? The first and foremost important benefit is expansion of knowledge. Now in clinical practice, competent critical thinking skills are required for decision making in diagnosis and treatment planning. Now this as a whole depends on the proper knowledge and ability of a student to utilize the scientific methodology. Now participating in research activities and reviewing research articles, this allows the dental student to expand their knowledge in assessing traditional and new therapeutic agents, selection of different types of operative techniques, and planning for advanced treatment ultimately prepares the student to practice evidence-based dentistry. Now it also helps the student to find a specific area of interest. And it also helps the clinician to establish it with latest research findings, emerging trends of diagnosis and innovative treatment approaches, and also in new disease management modalities. Now when a student is engaged in research activities, he or she will develop a new set of skills because research always promotes logical and scientific thinking. When a student is analyzing research articles, it enables the student to evaluate the article's quality and reliability of its scientific evidence. It also helps in enhancing their ability to make clinical decisions for treatment planning. It also gives a wonderful hands-on experience on operating traditional and advanced instruments, advanced diagnostic and treatment systems. And when he or she finishes his review process or research, he will write his or her paper which, uh, to which he learns how to showcase your hard work and critical thinking in a scientific manner in peer-reviewed journals. It also inspires one towards innovation and solve real-world problems. Now, in terms of professional growth, active involvement in research enhances a dental student's professional profile. It also increases their competitiveness in the changing job market in both private and government jobs. Publishing research articles in peer-reviewed journals demonstrates a student's dedication to the field and also enhances his or her credibility. It opens up opportunities for career development in academic institutions and other research institutions. It also improves the profile of a dental practitioner. Let's talk about various research avenues in dentistry. Nowadays, dentistry is having more than 10 subfields, but in terms of research strategies, I have categorized this in a new way. So first is disease diagnosis and uh, with novel approaches, then understanding the disease course and pathogenesis, then developing new treatment modalities and drug and vaccine development associated with it. Combined patient care approaches, uh, for example, in pediatric dentistry and geriatric dentistry, dental education using animation, AR and VR, 
and lastly newly introduced restorative and preventive dental materials now in terms of disease diagnosis and novel approaches we already know that traditionally these methods like suprovital staining using toroidin 2 and lobocidine rapid papanicola staining method oral explorative cytology and oral biopsy the incisional biopsy has been used to detect oral potential in malignant disorders and oral squamous cell carcinoma but with the advent of artificial intelligence and new uh, various other uh, methods we have seen uh, vislite and vislite blue light devices then we have uh, seen uh, devices that uses velscope we have also seen artificial intelligence based oral explorative cytology systems which are also in a uh, hot topic for uh, research these days they all are being used in conjunction with the traditional methods and uh, they have shown quite promising and fascinating results now harnessing the power of ai cancer detection using intraoral imaging devices has also been done these algorithms are capable of differentiating normal mucosa from leukoplakia and carcinoma now harnessing the power of artificial intelligence automatic identification of clinical relevant regions from oral histological images has also been studied there is an example where das dik et al has studied oral squamous cell carcinoma and they have trained their artificial intelligence based algorithm to identify the keratin pulse now in a given histopathological images of oral squamous cell carcinoma their program has shown quite good accuracy and they are capable of detecting keratin pulse which you can see here in this given histopathological image and they have also shown a promising segmentation accuracy of 98.05% now how the artificial intelligence based diagnostics uh, actually works so to develop such a algorithm first we have to give input such as whole slide images or clinical photograph or radiographs from these data input data they will extract the features like cellularity and mitosis location size and shape of the pathology or texture or color of the region of interest in a given radiograph after that they will generate image patches which will be used through machine learning and deep learning to generate uh, to train an algorithm and following this they can give, uh, give predictions where a given tissue or slide or a clinical photograph or a radiograph is having cancer dysplasia or normal tissue so in terms of dental cases explorer probe mirror and radiograph have been widely used and they are quite uh, capable of doing their job but newly introduced devices like diagnodent which is a laser assisted case detection device they use diode li laser light source and fiber optic cable to transilluminate the tooth with a handheld probe infrared fluorescence of teeth and shows a score of 0 to 99 in the digital display which can be used to determine whether the tooth is having uh, caries uh, caries activity or not the now there are diaphoretic devices which stands for digital imaging fiber optic transillumination these devices are capable of detecting interproximal caries or incipient caries in the interproximal uh, regions using a light source and and their accuracy is comparable with that of traditional radiographic method to detect incipient caries in interproximal regions now caries scan pro is another device which is this alternating current impedance spectroscopy technology to detect dental caries they have also shown accurate and repeatable results and they are very simple and easy to use scanner system is another device which exhibited 97% sensitivity rate in diagnosing dental caries they uses photothermal radiometry and luminescence technology now this device which is depicted here this looks like an electronic apex locator but this is originally a electronic case detection system which is capable of detecting early caries in tooth now along with this novel approaches for dental caries detection artificial intelligence based systems has also been uh, introduced like this dentistry.ai this is a system which is capable of diagnosing or detecting dental caries in interproximal re region from biotwin radiographs are uploaded to the system periodontology identification of risk factors and periodontal parameters is very important where periodontally compromised teeth uh, and uh, diagnosis of aggressive and chronic periodontitis using clinical immunological and microbial data can be done now for the periodontology part use of uh, periodontal pocket measurement is very much important which have been uh, classically done by using different types of probes now newly uh, invented devices who, which uses computer and ai based systems to detect the, the depth of periodontal pocket has also been introduced
Field of orthodontics, especially designed mobile camera attachments have been also designed, which can turn your regular smartphone into a more smart orthodontic monitoring devices, and they are capable of detecting minute faults of occlusion. WebSafe is a cross-platform system that can detect anatomical landmarks and deliver cephalometric analysis from a digital lateral cephalogram. For metastasis detection in oral squamous cell carcinoma from radiographs, Yoshiko Areji et al. has shown that auto detection of cervical lymph nodes in oral squamous cell carcinoma patients can be done from computer tomography images. Let's talk about understanding the disease course and pathogenesis. To understand how any microorganism or foreign substance or genomic substance is causing a disease is very important because if the pathogenesis of any disease is known, then it becomes a lot easier to develop a prevention or treatment plan for the disease because you know where you have to act. So this becomes very important in the field of oral pathology, oral surgery, regenerative dentistry, pediatric dentistry, restorative dentistry, geriatric dentistry, periodontics, and orthodontics. Now, newer drug development for targeted molecular therapies, it has been used for aggressive diseases like odontogenic and non-odontogenic origin devices, benign and malignant neoplasms, they can cause significant local destruction and deteriorating systemic effects. Now, conventional methods uh, are more surgical, where wide base excretions provide significant long term survival along with the chemotherapy and radiotherapy. However, recurrence rates are still high in several diseases, and also surgical exc excision results in significant localized tissue morbidity and affects the quality of life. Microbiological association with oral health and disease has also been a hot topic of discussion these days because oral microbial flora has a very important and significant correlation with oral immunity. Now, using this flowchart, I have tried to give a very simple example that how targeted molecular therapy can be developed when you understand etiopathogenesis of a disease. So, in case of odontogenic neoplasm, activation of RAS pathway and BRAF mutation is ultimately leading to extracellular signal regulated kinase activation, which is ultimately leading to increased cell survival, proliferation, metastasis, and odontogenic tumor formation. So, if this pathway at this point can be blocked, then definitely the disease process can be prevented. Thus, understanding a disease pathogenesis can help us in developing newer targets for molecular therapy. Now, if you go to PubMed and uh, search with the keywords of targeted molecular therapy for oral cancer, you, show, you will see numbers of articles which currently depicts that how important is this field of research. Now, developing new treatment modalities is another hot topic. Here we can see that all tissue laser systems with laser aerosol production has been introduced. Electrical muscle stimulator, which provides pain relief from TM joint, has also been introduced. Speed waste technique uh, can uh, improve class 2 restorations. Advanced precise 3D printers have been used for preparing surgical guides. And for uh, patient maintenance and awareness, use of electronic oral hygiene devices have been significantly increased these days. And high vacuum suction assisted transparent shields uh, has been uh, shown reducing aerosol production and uh, has also been shown to reduce the risk of airborne disease transmission. Now, some of these devices were developed during the COVID-19 pandemic and, and these devices are quite capable of serving the purpose with accuracy. Now, robotics is another emerging trend Robot has been made that are capable of not only extraction of teeth, but they are also capable of putting an implant inside the jaw. Now for oral and maxillofacial processes fabrication, automated AI-guided CAD CAM and 3D printing devices have also been used. They have also shown promising and fascinating results. For dental education, animation and augmented reality has always been a matter of interest to students where the physiology and pathology of various diseases are explained in more elaborative and lively manner. Augmented reality microscopes, on the other hand, are not only capable of detecting pathology in a given histopathology slide, they can also be used uh, to teach the student how to identify a region of interest in a given histology slide. Using virtual reality, students are now learning to practice simulation for local anesthetic techniques, cavity preparation, Newer approaches have also been introduced to give an immersive experience of histopathology from three-dimensional or virtual models of tissues so the students can understand the normal architectural components and associated physiological and pathological processes. Now in India, academic institutions like dental colleges and universities who are DCI recognized and delivered postgraduate education 
they are providing ample opportunities of research engagement these institutions offer research projects under the guidance of experienced faculty members and promote the culture of research now there are various dental research organizations also in national and international level for instance the indian society of dental research encourages dental professionals to engage in research by organizing conference seminars and workshops the istr collaborates with various institutions nationally and internationally to support and publish high quality research articles in pubmed index journals now in terms of funding the indian government through funding agencies like department of science and technology and the indian council of medical research they provide grants and fellowships to support dental research projects these funding opportunities assist the undergraduate and postgraduate students in carrying out their research work and promotes scientific investigations in dentistry now there are various industry collaborations where the research and development of dental materials instruments and technologies has been done these industry partnerships facilitate cutting edge research and provide dental students with exposure to the latest advancements in the field collaborations with dental companies can lead to research funding access to specialized resources and potential career opportunities nowadays international collaborations in dental research are gaining prominence because they allow the students and researchers to engage in joint research projects and exchange programs collaborating with foreign universities research institutions and experts expands the research opportunities fosters cross cultural learning and enhances the global perspective of dental students and researchers so to summarize my lecture if you are a person who thinks scientifically and logically if you are patient enough and dedicated to hard work if you are innovative and have the mentality to solve real world problems welcome to the world of dental research for undergraduate student you must try to publish at least one paper during your bbs course it can be a case report short or exploratory study a review article but it must be done under the guidance of an experienced senior or teacher or mentor because no matter how many youtube instructors you see our faculties and seniors are our best teachers but whatever you are doing you must write it and showcase your innovative concepts with the rest of the dental science fraternity so if you are interested enough what you can do now is develop a mentality for critical logical and scientific thinking along with your regular study lab work pre clinical and clinical work and you should always try to find why you are doing that single step or that single work what is the reason behind it you must find the cause you can have a linkedin profile to know about how the world is progressing in your field of interest you will get a dozen of idea and believe me it is far better to browse in linkedin than browsing in other social networking site and you can go through your favorite topic or topic of interest in pubmed google scholar and you can discuss them with your seniors mentors and teachers most importantly start working so with this final note i am concluding my lecture is uh, innovate for a better future uh, huge thanks to my uh, faculties dr aditya beers dr ji augustin dr priya kumar dr haskar narayan dr revati krishna and all the staffs and fellow colleagues of the department of oral pathology of maulana azad institute of dental science i will also like to thank dr gargiroy goswami ma'am to giving me this exclusive opportunity to speak uh, in this uh, conference because uh, from the speaker board you will know that i am the junior most and also like to thank dr jagopal rai dr haritas das adhikari dr ranjan sir and dr pompa ma'am from uh, dr r amit dental college and hospital and i will also like to thank my uh, biology teacher mr subhuto shah and uh, i am most thankful to my family and dr shobdar adosh thank you